Hello everyone, my name is Jaybird and welcome back to Fare Thee Well. Now if you hear anything in the background or hear anyone saying, Dear? 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 Uh, that would be my boyfriend because he's on a Skype call and he's asleep, but he, I kind of heard him like rustling and moving around in his bed earlier, so it kind of sounded like he was like waking up. So if he's awake... Uh, uh, but anyways, we're just going to jump into it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. As I tried to decide what to do, I begin walking along the single main road through Setter. The trees are sick here, providing ample shade interspersed with patches of waning sunlight. I pass the general store on the right. I need to make a choice. I look up, <coughs> excuse me, and see the path to the bench that overlooks the sunrise. It hits me. Did I ever really have a choice today? My path is leading me back to Setter one way or another. The road, the truck, my thoughts, all of it led to Setter. I veer left, cross the road, and step up onto the old wooden stairs to hearth and home. The steps have a reassuring, organic feel to them, oddly rustic and welcoming. I can feel warmth radiating from the sun-soaked bricks. I think I'm going to give this a shot. It is almost as though fate led me here, and on some instinctive level, I get the feeling that I was heading here all, all, all along. My hand closes around the old wrought iron door handle as the sound of the truck's engine passes by, followed by the bellow of an air horn. As the trucker continues on his own path, the surrounding forest swallows up the roar of the engine, and as, and as suddenly as they were there, they are gone again. There is a magic to this place. I open the door and step into the cool darkness. The fading light from outside momentarily illuminates the room, and the bartender looks up to greet his first customer of the day. My eyes take a second to adjust, but there is no doubt this place really hasn't changed. The present and the past crash together and are surprisingly nearly indistinguishable. The bartender is a bit of an exception, though. His hair is gray, and his face is more lines than when we last met. He sets a glass down behind the old, polished, dark wood bar, and there is a look of growing recognition in his eyes, but that same look is clouded by doubt. Afternoon, what can I get you? A beer would be fine, thank you. You got it. The bartender smoothly and deftly fills the glass, and sets it down in front of me on a plain white napkin. Making brief eye contact that somehow conveys the notion that he has decided upon something. So, just passing through again? I look up from my beer and look at him. There is a small smile and knowing look in his eyes. His memory is excellent. What do I say? I was thinking that maybe this time I'll stay a bit longer this time. Yeah, the weather's nicer, that's for sure. You know, I never forget a face. Yet again, normally those faces age a little in 20 years. How are you? It's a long story. I believe that. You know, I've counted every day since that winter night. Why have you returned? Surely you wouldn't have come back here after two entire decades just to have a drink here at my bar. I'm not entirely sure to tell you the truth. A gentle silence fills the air between us as he hands me the beer and I take a sip, clearing my throat. I'm not sure if you will be able to help me, but I have a favor to ask. Shoot. Last time I happened my way into this bar, do you remember the charming girl in green? Her voice was enchanting, one of a kind, really. Whatever happened to her? On the line? Well, luck would have it, she still lives here in Setter. Actually, she still comes to help out from time to time here at this dusty old place. My eyes light up with this very, very good news. She's still here, even after all this time? I can hardly believe it. I'm gonna check my phone. that I will never carve because that's really morbid and disturbing because she's a living, breathing creature. Yeah, she lives just down the road with her husband and young boy. I feel crushed. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it hurts nevertheless. The bartender must have caught on as he continues. Has this changed anything? I assume you had something in mind. 
while it should, it doesn't really. I'm not entirely sure what I would have done, anyhow. Would it be wrong of me to ask of an address? While I would give it to you regardless, it's not necessary. She comes by every morning with her son to help set up for the day. You should come again tomorrow, as I assume you are planning to stay for a while. Yeah, I'll be here. Thanks. Really, it means a lot. Don't mention it. Anything for an old friend. With that, I sip my beer and think of, com of the coming events. The fear that she won't recognize me once again crosses my mind, but I push it off in search of a bed to lay in my, to lay in my head. Ugh, so many distractions. I nod to the bartender and make my way to a local motel to rest up for the night. The next morning I arrive early enough to help the bartender with the tables, stools, and chairs. The worn wood seems to embody the place as a whole, well worn with time and filled with warmth. I take a seat in front of the bar as the old man organizes the rainbow of colored glasses, glass bottles behind it. Calm down, son. You'd think someone with as much experience as you would have learned to deal with these situations. Saying goodbye is easy, but the returns and the greetings... The old man met my eyes and inclined his head toward the door, making my best effort to keep my do- my- To keep my door? What? To keep my door? I noticed Emmeline and her son, probably around seven years old, an inquisitive blue-eyed boy with brown hair- Clover! She's a muffin butt. Emmeline glances around the bar and seems mildly disappointed. Her gaze flits over me as it would one of the tables. She approaches the old man. Oh, shit. You set up without me? Sorry, Emma. I should have mentioned earlier that I have a new employee in training. He helped me this morning. We still have the stage set up, though. I'll get you some work yet. She looks at me directly for the first time, but there is no spark of memory in her eyes, only the casual friendliness of someone greeting a new acquaintance. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Emmeline, and this is my son, Michael. Michael plays with the collar of his shirt and averts his eyes. Hi. I give him a smile and a wave, and then extend my hand to Emmeline. She shakes it. I take a page out of Michael's book. I'm too nervous to meet her gaze directly for too long. It's nice to meet bo you both. Right, well, that stage isn't going to set itself up, Em. Why don't you and Michael teach this greenie here the ropes? I've got a few more glasses to clean. Only nods and gestures for Michael to follow her to the stage. Hooray. Have you ever worked in a bar before? No. I know my way around one. Don't we all? Michael climbs up the front of the stage and seems to be opening a bin that contained the c cables. How how old are you? Twenty-five? I'm a little older than I look. I'm assuming he's done this before. Emmeline walks beside the stage to retrieve a broom and a dustpan before starting to sweep behind the speakers, amps, and other sound equipment. Yeah, he loves to listen to music, so this is right up his alley. It's karaoke night tonight, so the setup will be a little different. I set about putting the microphone in center stage, and I feel something nudge my leg. I see Michael holding a cable toward me. That one goes with this one. Oh, thanks. Uh, what kind of music do you enjoy, Michael? I take the cable he offered me and hook it up. Surely enough, the audio jack and ports are the correct sizes, and the cable is long enough to walk around the stage if, with if necessary. The stray cats and, uh... He looks at his mother for answers, looking anxious. You remember? Depeche Mode, sometimes you listen to Michael Jackson. I'm more of a Simone and Garfunkel gal myself. Oh my god. <sighs> Simon and Garfunkel gal myself. The new stuff isn't bad, but there's something about the acoustic guitars. It brings to mind the open road and people singing in new bars, soft atmospheres, and a good crowd. Emmeline looks back at me and gives me a genuine smile. Not the practice friendliness of polite greeting, but something with altogether more substance. Michael and I finish setting up all of the relevant chords. 
Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. Well, it's about time. I have to get Michael to school. Okay. Bye, lady. A mine waves goodbye to the bartender, takes Michael's hand, walking toward the door. Same time tomorrow. Have a good day. Emeline pauses before she reaches the door and freezes in place. First, I wonder if she had forgotten something, but then she turns and I see it. That spark of remembrance, the warmth in her eyes that signifies memory. Now she knows who I am. She remembers that night, who two decades passed. She brings a hand to her cheek as Michael tugs at her shirt. Mommy, are you okay? I'm alright. Let's get you to school. I sigh and lean against the worn mahogany of the bar, and I can hear the bartender pouring a glass of something. I didn't b bother to turn around. My eyes were fixed on the road, watching them drive away. Well, you couldn't have been expecting anything else, could you? No, I couldn't have. Do you want to hear the story of that winter night? Yeah, why not? This is for you, by the way. Looks like you could use it. On the house. I turn enough to pick it up and take a sip, but my gaze remains on the road. Emmeline is a long is long gone by now, but I can't bring myself to look inside again, not just yet. I don't know how much you remember. Em and I left after talking. Really bonding, you know, at one of these tables by that window. I gesture in the general direction with a finger extended from my hand that held my drink. The brownish fluid sloshed around behind the intricate lines of the glass, and I realized that it was the same kind I had used that night so many years ago. <clears throat> we walked out of this place together and explored the town after dark. We sat on that bench, overlooking the snow, talking of ourselves. Such a simple yet meaningful thing, sitting close and talking. I brought up the legend of the Wanderer. I didn't think she'd take it seriously. But she did. She listened, and in the end she identified with it. Of course, you know Emmeline's story, how she got here. She has every bit as much wanderlust as I did. I take a sip from my glass and turn around before looking into the cup. Or had. I guess everyone else is like me eventually grows out of that phase. I suppose a part of me realized it then. I didn't want to break her heart, so I just left. Ultimately, I shouldn't be surprised that she didn't remember me at first. I'm sure she's had to deal with her share of people walking out of her life. It was only one night. It was a long night. The old man puts a comforting hand on my shoulder. You know, I didn't think Emmeline would ever settle down, but her husband, well, you didn't like him. He runs the Tri-County newspaper. Takes a family camping often in the summer and autumn. You couldn't ask for a better life for her or her son in this town. I nod and hand the bartender back his glass. Thanks for the drink, and thanks for the cover earlier. Do you really need some help around here? That I do. If you want to settle in for a few years, I'd love to have you around. But you know what happens if you stay a wanderer. Are you sure you want to deal with that? I ran a hand through my hair and looked outside, wondering what it would be like to stay in this town for a few years. I think I'm going to get some fresh air. If I return, you'll know my answer. If I don't, well, you'll know just the same. Actually, if you wouldn't mind, I think I need a break for today. If it's okay with you, that is. Yeah, I'll close up shop. I'll keep everything straight, don't worry. The bartender nods, swipes a few more surfaces, and heads out. He gives me one last fleeting smile before the door closes with an odd sense of finality. Huh. With that I am left alone. The emptiness of the bar fills the air. Silence is keeping me company as it has the past hundred years. Oh my god. Well, guys, that's going to be it for this episode of Fare Thee Well. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this and would like to see more of this game, then leave a like down below, leave a comment down below, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, ring that notification bell, and remember, die safely. Bye-bye!